Well, first of all, are you about where you hoped, where you wanted to be uh, on the first day of the season? Ready to go again? Yeah, the first day of the season is always the day where you're not so sure uh, on, what, on what level you are, because in the preseason um, it's always tough to see um, how far you are in your, in your, with your game and how good it is. And yeah, but I think it's for every team the same. Um, but I think the preseason so far, I must say, we had a good time together. We had a chance to train together. Um, we had good tests. Uh, I think we are prepared for yeah, for a tough league. Uh, and what about where you are in terms of your squads? Because we've seen a lot of high-profile exits. Um, do you feel, first of all, you've got adequate goals in you with Ings going? Um, Vestergaard could be on his way, or that deal may well have been done by now. Are, are you? Do you feel like you've got enough in? I think the 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 size of the squad is a much better one. I think that last season we have more um, quality, definitely um, more numbers. And yes, we lost a few very important players for our club. Uh, what was an absolutely must because uh, two of them had only one year left in his contract. And uh, for the club, it is the only way you can you can go because. Um, the rules, you know, in, in the transfer market are like this. When you come in the last two years of a contract with a player, then the power moves to the player. And do not let them go without transfer fee. What is a disaster for every club. Uh, we, had to, we had to do these deals and finally we're happy that uh, we made these deals and we could replace them with new players and uh, made the sport bigger with players with... Uh, a future here in this club with potential to develop and yes i'm happy about the job we have done in the transfer market so far there's still one position to do because uh, we lost Yannick now and uh, we know that in the center back position we are not really uh, super strong uh, with the numbers but uh, the rest of the squad seems to be quite balanced uh, good in every position uh, and prepared for a long long run with a lot of games and you don't envisage losing anybody else. Clearly, James Ward Prowse has attracted a lot of attention, but you, are you confident that he'll still be with you this season? Yeah, this is normal. I think that Prowse is uh, a guy who um, everybody wants to have, but um, I don't see the scenario for him uh, not to be with us uh, for the next years. So he knows uh, that he's a captain here. We know how important he is for our club. He feels good here and we feel good with him and he has a four-year contract here. So uh, the situation with him is a different one. And finally, uh, I think the squad we see now is the squad we are going this season. We will play this season, as I said, maybe one more player is coming in and that we had uh, have done what we wanted to do before the transfer a period to to strengthen the team to to make it bigger and uh, to have some more alternatives for the for the next season okay we'll go to olivia at plp hi ralph hello um you obviously lost danny ings obviously we've spoken about that quite a lot and um, do you think your season will be defined by those players that you brought in to replace him and what have you made or have you got confidence that you know adam armstrong and armando Broja can be two of those players that can, you know, help score those goals? Yeah, I mean, one thing is clear, we lost, we lost with Danny Ings, uh, uh, a very good scorer. Um, some of the people are saying that it was our endurance, but uh, in, the, in the end, uh, uh, we also played a few games without him and scored our goals. So, uh, it's now on, on the other shoulders to, to, to lift us as a club, to, to give us the goals we need to score to, to uh, reach our targets for this season. And I'm not scared that we don't have enough players in that can score goals and they can deliver what we want them to do. Um, they will work hard for the club and they will show that they have the qualities. I don't expect anybody scoring 25 goals uh, for us next season. But when I have four players, everybody scores uh, 10 goals, I will be also happy. Um, you mentioned your targets there. What are Southampton's targets for this season? 
yeah to have uh, more consistently one like last season and there was a very good first half and a very bad second half and finally um yeah a top 10 ranking is always the target we have to go and we have to aim for and uh, this is uh, after the the main target staying in the league the, the the bigger target for the players for us as a club and uh, when we score the amount of goals we scored last year and uh, concede uh, less goals uh, than in the second half of the last season, then this is definitely possible for us. But uh, therefore, we need to have uh, yeah, a very good start and a very good uh, commitment in the group uh, and uh, the new players immediately having a good impact in the team. Um, and just finally, obviously, you're playing um, Everton, a new manager, um, Carlo Ancelotti obviously left and Rafa Benitez is in. Is it harder? Um, to play a team that they've just got a new manager because you're not really sure what to expect from them? Yeah, in the beginning of the season, it's always difficult uh, to, to prepare for the first game. You don't have this information about what they're doing. We saw a few pre-season games, but uh, there are a few players out like Calvert-Lewin, like Richard Nilsson, so they didn't play there. We know that this is a strong side and uh, we have to go there at first time since a long time. Uh, with supporters, so it will be a little bit uh, noisy and uh, yeah, a little bit better atmosphere. And um, therefore, we have to be prepared. It's not really easy to do it in the preseason, but I think it would be a new situation for some players uh, after such a long time playing in front of a full crowd. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Olivia. We'll go to Adam at BBC Radio Stadium. Where is Adam? Hey, Ralph, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry, I just had to press a couple of buttons, which at my age is never easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, what, what is the situation then with Yannick Vestergaard? Neither club have announced anything. Is it a, is it a done deal and you've accepted a bid, as, every, as people of reports have said? Are you happy with the deal you've got? What's, what's the actual progress report on that move? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, he's still in the medicals and and uh, medical check when he's done and when when the deal is done and then he will go to Leicester, and then it's for us to replace him and this is what we will do in the future. Okay, um, you've got a youthful, a young-looking squad now. You've brought in some young players with potential. Um, how much um, responsibility is there on some of your senior players? Because as we've said, some of the senior players have gone this summer how much on the ones that are still here Pratt, Ward Prowse and Romeo Armstrong Redmond players like that how much does the do the youngsters need them to lead them through when you have difficult days and stuff what how big a role have they got to play to help you with the younger players I think it can be also an advantage to have the young lads here on the pitch I think uh, when they have quality they are uh, yeah, hungry. They want to to show up. Um, we have enough experience in the in the team, definitely. But it's more important that we we like to work hard and we like to to yeah to put the effort on the pitch. What we need to do. Yes, Premier League is a strong league, no question. And um, we have to have a good balance. But we have enough experience. When you say Ori, Prousey, Theo, Czech, they have played a lot of games in the Premier League so far. Even Shea is meanwhile an experienced Premier League player. And uh, so I don't see us uh, being short of, of experience on, 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 no, on, no, on you know, in no uh, part of the game, in no, you know, part of the team. And this is okay. And Everton, you've got a game on Saturday we haven't really spoken about yet. Um, big start at Goodison Park. Um, what, what are your thoughts about taking on uh, Rafa Benitez's Everton as opposed to Carlo Ancelotti's Everton? Our experience uh, manager. Uh, a lot of experience in every league in the world, and uh, he's well known in the Premier League. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I think he did a good job wherever he was as a manager. And finally, uh, yeah, as a team, uh, a start where we all have to go there and be brave, and and uh, uh, finally, uh, yeah, be competitive for 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 everything that happens not surprised of the atmosphere not surprised of the strength of the opponent being there to be uh, competing against them and then we have a chance to win okay thanks Adam. thank you ralph we'll move on to jackson cole from talk sport jackson hi ralph hello 
Um, as, as has been mentioned, there have been a lot of transfers in and out of the club this summer. Do you feel it will take time for the team to gel together or have you seen enough in training and during the pre-season matches to be encouraged that you can get off to a good start this season? Um, yeah, yes, in different ways. I mean, some players have been here from the first day of the preseason, like Romain. I think for him it's not difficult. You know, he's now six weeks here. He knows everything. He has trained with us. He has played with us. Tino Livermento, two weeks, also okay. He had uh, one game and and uh, one forty-five minutes. For Adam and and Borussia, it's a little bit more difficult, I think, because uh, now they are stepping in before the first game and. Uh, uh, yes, I think that will take maybe a little bit longer. We are busy of making meetings with them and showing them our philosophy, working with them every day to get them in a in a good, also mentally shape. And then, yeah, yeah the, the time will come very quick that they have to play and then, yeah, we'll have a look how good they are. Would you say you've learned anything new about your squad this summer? I must say that we had... Um, like always in the preseason, a very good atmosphere. Everybody likes to work hard. Even the players that are coming back from loan uh, clubs like Moy and uh, Jan Valerie and Longy, they they like to work hard. They showed up and 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 were fighting for 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 being in the in, in the squad. We need every player this season. This is for sure. The season is so long. This is the experience we made last season that we had have been a little bit short of of, of numbers to be honest. And now we have a, a wider squad, a bigger squad, and uh, in the end, uh, yeah, a lot of games coming up and uh, everybody must uh, bring himself in the best physical and mentally conditions to help us. And yeah, just finally for me, what have you made of all these big transfers happening in the Premier League? It's almost quite surprising off the back of a global pandemic and no fans in the stadiums. Yes, it is surprising and it shows about the... Uh, power the Premier League has still, uh, although every club lost a lot of money. I mean, for us, we are uh, we have taken more money than we have spent, to be honest, I think, so far. And uh, this was a good transfer period for us, I must say. We also lost money like every other club, but uh, some owners really want to, to push hard to, to win titles, to win the Champions League and whatever. And, and the Premier League is still the number one league in the world and um, when there are transfers from players they are uh, under contract in somewhere else and this money goes then to to other clubs and then yeah maybe we have all this uh, profit from from the, the Grealish transfer for example because we got the money for Danny Ings we can spend the money for Adam uh, Armstrong the Blackburn can spend the money for somebody else so I think this is uh, the, the the money stays in the market in, in in England. I think this is fantastic. And then yeah, we have I think uh, well, the Premier League has proven that they are very, very, very uh, yeah wealthy 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 league in the in the world. Okay, thanks, Jackson. We'll move on now to Jim at BA. Jim. Hi, Ralph. Nice to see you again. Hello. Hi. Can I just check on on the the team news with with the squad? Is um James Ward Prowse is, is is he going to be okay? He's going to be okay. Uh, he trained the whole week and uh, I'm looking forward to having him back on, on Saturday. And Smallbone still recovering? Will is still recovering. Um, um, so far, not with the team. Hopefully uh, that he also come back, comes back in the future. Um, but it will take time a little bit more, I think. And no, no other fitness issues to worry about? No, no other. Uh, everybody's fit, and after this uh, hard and tough preseason, uh, this is a good signal that we worked good with them. We had a good balance of um, pushing them hard and also recovering in the right moment. So uh, the worst you can get is if you are training four or five weeks very hard, and then you get an injury in the last week. So touch wood, that didn't happen. Um, you, you said it, it would have been a disaster for the club if the players had gone into the final years of their contract and you hadn't been able to get a transfer fee for them. Do you think the supporters will understand that when they see Ings and Vestergaard playing for somebody else? Yeah, I'm not such a big uh, follower from social media's uh, uh, postings, but uh, I get only uh, told what they say and it seems that they understand very good uh, what uh, for a club we are and that was 
the best you could do as a club for both players. And I mean, uh, in the end, uh, when you re-spend the money, then I think they will definitely agree. Overall, must be the success, the sportive success. This is always uh, the biggest challenge for a manager. You lose your best scorer and still uh, demand to have the most possible success. But this is our job and uh, I'm not the only manager who lose best players and then uh, still need to perform well. First question is, is this now your squad? This is, I think, your sixth transfer window. You inherited a lot of players that weren't yours. A lot of them have now left. So is this squad how you envisaged it when you started? I, I think this is a squad what is naturally changing through the years. Uh, uh, we are at a club that develops players and sell them for more money and then get another young new in and then develop them and then they're also going. So uh, this is uh, not a, uh, about, uh, yeah, wish you uh, the best players in the world and then play here in Southampton. We, we exactly know what is our image. We exactly know what is about uh, uh, being here. And the most important thing I always said is that we have players here that really want to be with us. They really want to, to fight for this club and know what it's about to be a player from Southampton Football Club. And this is not for the players only, it's also for the manager. And uh, finally, uh, this can be then a group that is successful, although we have our limits. And I think this is a, a very, very healthy way uh, to, to develop a club. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future with these guys. And in terms of your preparations for the new season, you know, how, how do they compare to the seasons in the past? Have they been better? Do you feel that this has been the best pre-season you've had with them? Or has it been not so great? Or It's always hard to say. The last pre-season was completely different because mm -hmm. it were only three weeks to prepare. It was a completely different situation. Uh, I think this pre-season was uh, with... Uh, with the few in front that we are back in full stadium, something special for the players. I think everybody is really uh, keen to come back in the Premier League, in a normal Premier League with all the uh, crowd and, and the, the way fans and everything. So this is something very special for every player. And you can feel that every player really wants to play, really fight it hard for being in the squad. And uh, that doesn't mean when you're not in the squad on the first, first weekend that... Uh, um, you have, we will have a bad season. Uh, I remember two years ago when we started without Danny Yings in the starting 11 in the first two or three games and in the end of the season he had 24 goals scored for us. So uh, it's never too late to show up. It's never too late to, to grab the chance with both hands and finally step in and then help the team. We will have in the beginning starters and finishers and uh, the most important thing is that we are as a group uh, super committed and support each other and then we can uh, let something grow here. Okay, thanks Dan. We'll go to another Dan, Dan Rose at the Echo. Afternoon, Ralph. Hello, good afternoon. Um, first of all, you mentioned the, the lone players coming back into the squad there and working hard with with the group during pre-season. Obviously, one of those in Mohamed El Yunusi has been away for two years at Celtic. He's come back in and, and featured quite a lot during the pre-season game. Just what's it been like to work and have him back in and around the squad and, and, and learn the ways again? Yeah, he's a, a very good player with uh, some some important skills for our game. Uh, strong in the red zone, in the pockets, good solutions there. And yes, he he, he showed in the preseason that we we can count on him. And I'm sure that uh, in this season he will make a, a lot of games. Looking at the the centre half, you said obviously Yannick set to the part of the club, but you did you have signed on for the future already and an exciting centre back in Daniel Simeo, haven't you? That's gone into the B teams system already. Just how excited are you by him and how much can he learn over the next sort of twelve months to be ready to make that next step again? Yeah, he only trained one or two times with us so far, so I haven't seen him so often. Uh, I think it was a very good signing for the for the B team at first, and then we have to look how quick he develops himself, and then uh, we can decide if he. If he's also part of the first team, that doesn't mean that we don't bring another centre back in in the in the first team because we need to. Thanks, Dan. We'll go to Tom Leach at Hampshire Valley. Hello, Ralph. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Um, firstly, can I just ask about the situation with Michael Obafemi? Um, Blackburn have spoken about their interest in him. Tony Mowbray has already spoken about him. 
Um, seems like he's potentially off there, but we've not heard too much over the last two days. What's the latest with him? The latest from, with him is that he's um, uh, our player and a young player with potential uh, who has so far had uh, a few good games in Premier League but never made the really con consistent uh, good season so far. And uh, yes, I think uh, especially in this position we have in this season, very, very much alternatives and uh, that may, doesn't make it easier for him to play. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, we, as I said, we need every player this season. Uh, if he stays, he must fight hard for his position. And uh, we want him to, to be in and around the group. And finally, then uh, when, when, we, when we see, uh, yeah, he is not in the, in, in the race for, for, for starting, then we can discuss uh, what is the best for him. But uh, I don't want to make the mistake like last season that I let players go uh, when I think we have uh, use, for, uh, use for them. Okay. If I can just ask about the, the, the one signing you say might be done before the end of the month, the, the Yannick replacement. Um, are you looking for, well, we obviously know you're looking for a younger player, player, I think you said during, during the fans forum, a player in his second or third contract potentially. Um, but are you looking for someone with, you know, already Premier League experience under his belt? And are you also looking for someone who can potentially tick a few boxes for you? Because I know you're obviously light in central midfield as well. Yeah. The second part is definitely something we, is, is not a disadvantage when you can play also a six for us as an alternative on, on this position. If it is a young one um, in the centre back position, that is not 100% necessary. Also, an experienced player in this position can help you massively when he accepts his rules, uh, his role he has in the team. And then, yes, I think this is also an opportunity. We have a list, we will have a look what we do, uh, that we do something. This is clear. What is the, is the big question? Okay, thanks, Tom. Move to another Tom. Tom Bart here at Sun. Hi, Ralph. How are you? Hello, um, good to speak to you again. Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, you, you've obviously talked about losing Danny Ings and losing Yannick and the, the reasons for that. Uh, you obviously also lost Ryan Bertrand being out of contract. That's three top quality senior pros that have gone. You've obviously brought in a lot of young players with a lot of potential. Um, but I'm wondering from your perspective, is this looking like one of the the toughest seasons for you as a manager because you're going to have to try and get over the, the, the loss of those top players with youngsters coming in? Yeah, when, when I hear to all my friends, they said, what do you do now when Danny Ings is leaving? Uh, then I must be scared, but I don't listen to them because I know that uh, I have still a side that, is, uh, that has quality. And we know that we speak about the Premier League and you cannot replace Danny Ings with a striker that costs 50 million or whatever. And this is what a, a top Premier League striker will cost. So this is the way that I said we have to go. It's always like uh, starting again, starting again, starting again, develop the players, they leave, you go again and you go again. And I think it is our job. It is not tougher than the years before. Um, it is a pleasure for me to work with this group. It's a pleasure for me to look uh, uh, to make them better. We have a few very good young guys with potential. And uh, the key is that you have the quality. And if you think the quality to shine, then you can still have a very good season. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm not scared about um, uh, competing in this league, although it's a tough league and although there are uh, super opponents there. But we know that we can be a nasty op uh, opponent when we are committed and when we, when we play uh, our style of football in a good way. And um, just on the Danny situation, just how it ended up panning out. I mean, I remember being in a lot of these press conferences, mainly, mainly on Zoom. Uh, in the last 18 months where you were quite confident of him signing a contract and it obviously didn't happen. I'm just wondering what you learned about dealing with modern day players in that, through that experience and how things have changed. Yeah, I mean, one thing is for sure, when players are going in the last one or two years of the contract, uh, as I said, very often the power moves to the players uh, and away from the clubs. This is because of this more or less to discuss rule we have since Bosman that players at the end of the contract they are completely free and uh, this is a horrible situation for a lot of clubs in football and that leads us to this situation we are in a moment in that a lot of 
clubs are really struggling because we are not the only club who tries to extend contracts from players. They one time cost a lot of money and then don't want to stay with you anymore. So you have to add the wages what they had to the transfer fee you paid for them. And this is and that the total amount of money you have spent for this player. So for us, it's very important that we get something for players when they are coming in the last year. And that leads us to the situation we have been in. That doesn't mean that we want to sell them under the price they have because we also developed these players, we made them better. They are on maybe sometimes on the best levels in their career, like Inzi in the moment. He was never that good like he has been with us. And yes, then it's also understandable for the player that they want to maybe somewhere else get more money or whatever and take this instead of being a legend in this club forever. And uh, this is the modern football, this is how it changed. And we as a manager have to accept it and, and have to uh, find alternatives. And this is our goal. Okay, thanks, Tom. Move on to final uh, questions from Alex from Talksport. Yeah, not got my Talksport hat on today, actually, for the for the Daily Mirror. But um, happy new season, Ralph. Um, okay. Just based on what you've said there, and I heard you on Talksport actually talking about that maybe lack of loyalty in football. Would you be an advocate of amending or even scrapping the Bosman rule? Do you think it's becoming unfair for clubs? No, it's. I think it's. It, it was from the first day on uh, not healthy for football in general because money goes out of, this, of, of the football. And when I see players uh, running out of contact and then still asking for a 20, 30, 40 million signing fee or whatever for uh, parents or sisters or brothers or whatever, uh, and then this money leaves the football and goes somewhere else or in, in pockets of agents or somewhere else, then I think this is not good for football. And this is my absolute opinion that uh, when you have transfers and you, you move the, the money from the bigger clubs to the smaller clubs and then you end up in League One or in the non-league teams, uh, like this should be uh, normal in football, then football stays healthy and, and, and um, um, it doesn't become that excessive like it is in the moment. And I think... Um, we must really be careful in the future in what direction it goes. Uh, in the moment, um, I feel it every day that uh, especially uh, the English uh, football club are the only clubs that really can spend money. The rest of the world is really struggling. And maybe uh, not Paris Saint Germain, but the rest, we maybe yes. And uh, Italian, Spanish club everywhere, they are really struggling, especially they live with smaller clubs like we are. And uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, development of what is not healthy for the football, I think. And, and just on what you were saying about it almost being impossible to find a like-for-like -like replacement for Danny Ings, inevitably, because he's a striker, because you've used the Ings money to sign Armstrong, fans are going to expect him to step into those boots. How do you take the pressure off him, or do you think you can cope with that pressure? Oh, he, he's definitely coping with this. I, I think uh, he has the same uh, number on his shirt and, and uh, he doesn't care because he knows that he can score goals and it's on us to bring him in the position to go there. And finally, um, we know that that uh, we don't... Uh, Ingsi was coming here, it also took two years, I think, until he started scoring for us. So I think uh, we have enough time. Shea Adams uh, has enough time to develop himself and we, we, we know that it, it, it's not so easy to step in, in the Premier League and, and immediately be there. So. Yeah, they, the young lads, they get all the time they need to, to, to develop. 